Hello there. Thank you for tuning into the Real Garbage Podcast. So glad you're here. Please take a quick second, hit the subscribe button, and turn on notifications for new episodes every Sunday. And now, previously on Real Garbage. Nick Cage's stoned laugh yeah. was ridiculous. What? Can it you was, do an impression of it? Was, it? Uh, Let's hear it. It was really... <laughs> <laughs> and now coming up on this episode of Real Garbage. Is it belief or disbelief? What am I suspending here? Your disbelief. Suspending my disbelief. Yeah, because you want it, you're believing, so you're, you're suspending not believing. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. Um, unless it's one of those, it's not a double negative. No. All right. Uh -huh. We're learning stuff. See, welcome to Real Garbage. You can learn stuff here. <laughs> Everyone's so, like, we knew that already. Yeah. Everyone knew that already. <laughs> Idiot. Well, why would you control the population of Canadians? And I'm like, pfft. Two for one sales, man. Buy one, get one free. Lure them into a big box store. Nerve gas. Take their keys. Move the cars. Keep the sale going. Dude, you're thinking too much, man. You just... <laughs> just we... put poison into double doubles, no, man. We just, love... that, oh, they wow. have an automatic Ooh. machine. Just dump it in there. You're Ooh, good. Damn. That's yeah. even easier. Shit. Yeah. I'm joined by Jaden Worth once again this time around. We review the Matthew McConaughey 2005 film Sahara. We had a great time doing this. Stick around. Here's a quick word from our fake sponsors. This episode of Real Garbage is brought to you by Denise Dynamite Deals in Nanaimo. They're not a real sponsor. I just wanted to say it because I'm going there after the show uh, to buy some cool stuff. This episode of Real Garbage is also brought to you by my intense love for uh, Matthew McConaughey. I, uh, it's, been, it's, been a, it's been an issue that I've had to talk to multiple people about. And, uh, you know, we're walking through it one step at a time. The first... The first uh, Full step is admitting you have a problem, so. I'm happy for you. Thank you. Real Garbage! Ladies and gentlemen, realtors, welcome to Real Garbage on location at Jaden Worth's house in Nanaimo. <gasps> How you doing, Jaden? Good. I'm doing great, and uh, I'm so glad we got to be able to do this. And it's exciting um, that uh, I don't have to uh, drive around. <laughs> so that was nice. Oh, I didn't realize. I, I kind of feel like a dick when I just make everybody come to my house to record. When when really, like you're you're looking at all the gear I got here. Yeah, it's two bags. Yeah, yeah. it's two bags. Fifteen minutes of setup, and boom. Yeah, I can record anywhere. So this is like a whole new. It's gonna be a whole new chapter for the uh, Real Garbage Podcast. We're gonna start traveling around. I yeah, think this yeah. year is gonna be a year of mobile recording. Yeah, and it's really it's like it's it's. I I mean, I think it's fair, but like I, I was also, I'm usually pretty surprised about how like I don't think people realize how it's not that long of a drive. Like it's pretty short, but like it's it does take some time. Like it does, especially if you're going down just for like a date or for me going down to Victoria, mm -hmm. and it's like just because uh, I like. All my, I guess not so much now because COVID, but like, uh, other than that, go, having to drive all the way down there, it's like, especially if you're going down there to like just do one thing, and it's like two hours down, and then you're there for two hours, and it's two hours back up. So, so when when comedy was up and running, were you doing that? Were you like driving all the way in just to do one night of comedy, then driving all the way home after? So for late before COVID last year, I was um, like the last time sh shows existed, I guess. Um, we were. I was walking down in Victoria, down in Langford. Mm -hmm. So I was driving down any, every day, no matter what. Okay, well, that, that makes sense. Yeah, so so at least you're getting a double whammy. Because exactly, and I just stay later. And, and, um, and again, before COVID, if I, if I wanted to, I could just stay at a, a friend's place or something like that. Mm -hmm. Both my parents live down there. so I miss comedy. Mm -hmm. Dude, I've been itching to do it. The, in the first few months of this, I kind of I was at the point where I was like, man, you know, it's nice to have a break. I don't really feel too too bad about it. But recently, in this last few months, I'm like, God, I just want to get up and perform something. Yeah, it's brutal. And like, uh, we've we did a couple of these like nobody in the audience like shows before. Um, I guess before the only people in your house, we were doing these shows to nobody in this like place in Duncan, and um. You like we couldn't even talk to the owners and stuff that much because we all had to be like separated, because um, even then, and uh, and just no feedback and from from like nobody because they're all online. Yeah, it's I remember when we were thinking of ideas of how to do it, 
and I put one video out and I watched it after. I was like, God, it just seems creepy. I'm looking at the camera yeah. and like, you know, staring at like, hey, let me tell you a joke. It's yeah. just like, no, it doesn't work. Yeah. And a lot of people have been doing these Zoom shows too. And I just, mm, it's not the same. Yeah. I've heard a couple of people say that like they like it and like it's, it's just different. Um, um, but I've never done one that I thought was really great. And a lot of the time I just find that like, well, I've also never done one where like people have like paid money like bought tickets and done it so maybe that's different and they've got a way to like have the audience have some feedback and stuff like that Mm -hmm. i would assume yeah you think like everybody was unmuted and you can actually hear them laughing yeah still that's just kind of creepy coming out of a computer yeah i don't like it the same feel you gotta be able to feel the energy in the room you know when you tell a shitty joke you gotta feel that bomb and we do like meetings all the time at like I, i walk um in the public education system and uh uh so we do teams meetings all the time and it's brutal when you're like, you just have to, and it's uh, it's actually kind of nice and brutal at the same time. Cause like having to sit through the, like we've so many more meetings now. We, we used to have very minimal meetings and now we have so many meetings and it's all through teams. And so that really sucks. But the good part is, is that it's through teams and I like the uh, Wi-Fi at the school is always really bad. So everyone has to have their camera off, otherwise it glitches out. Oh, perfect. So I don't have to be listening. <laughs> that so. seems to be the, what everybody does. I know my, my buddy was doing some online classes like for his, uh, he's going to become a home inspector. I won't say his name because uh, yeah, he turns his camera off, keeps the audio on, but he sits there and plays FIFA. <laughs> nice. You know, for like 17-minute yeah. games. I'm like, are you supposed to be? He's like, ah, I'm getting most of the information. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you're never inspecting my home. <laughs> he's passing, though. He's doing well. Yeah, that's good. Man, I gotta say, you live in a nice neighborhood. I yeah. love this drive. I just, I, I it's couldn't, wild. couldn't believe the view of the mountains there coming down the road. Yeah, and the and the beach is, is two blocks down the road. I think your landlord's offering you some wine. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Greg. It's a Chardonnay. Yeah. Wish, nice. I, was, wish I was drinking and it he wasn't may, he, uh, ten a.m. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, he he makes his own wine. Oh damn. Um, yeah. There's there's so right behind me. There's uh like a grape. Bush is it a vine? I guess it's a vine. A, a vine yeah, grape a vine, obviously. But it's just yeah, he's got the one, and I think he like he doesn't always just use those grapes, but um, but yeah. So once a year, that thing will be good, and he'll take it all off and make make some wine. So he, we we get wine all the time. It's great. Nice. We had uh, friends down in Victoria that owned like a blueberry farm for a long time, and so blueberry um, wine, pot. Ooh, I oof. guess. And it was it, it was it used to be, uh, all the time. We would get it, and it would be great. Speaking of port, that's yeah. where you park a boat. <laughs> like an old lost boat they're looking for in Sahara. Yeah. Sahara? Sa- Sahara? 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 I, I say Sahara. Okay. Um, I'm going to switch in, uh, in between yeah. both. <laughs> Speaking um, of Sahara. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, I, I, I read the book when I was in high school, and I was like, I know what this movie's about. And then as I watched this movie, I was like, I don't think I know anything about this movie. Because <laughs> it started and it was in uh, uh, 1865 Civil War, Virginia. And already I was stoked because uh, uh, I love Matthew McConaughey. And so him as like Civil War era, I was so excited because you ever see uh, Free State of Jones? I started watching it and I, I just wasn't in a free state of uh, mind, free state of mind. So I was yeah. like, mm, I'll, I'll save it for later. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's pretty heavy and dark movie and long. Um, but uh, so I was like stoked, and then I was like, well, wait, we're not in the Civil War. <laughs> so I was I was let down by this movie uh, uh, immediately. But uh, I, Ironclads are the were those the, like is that a was that a real thing? I, I I'm taking their word for it. Yeah, because yeah, I'm assuming they did a little bit of research on yeah. this. Because I would assume it, there's something. This movie had a huge budget. I didn't see the total, but I know it was over a hundred million dollars to make Only. this movie. Wow. Only. <laughs> they spent two million dollars on a plane crash that they didn't even use. What, they didn't use it, dude. So I was telling you when I came in here, there's a lot of controversy around this movie. Yeah. Because the budget was kind of like cloaked in darkness, and then somebody exposed it, and they were like, "What is? What is this?" Like yeah. they paid two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to Penelope Cruz's uh, hairdresser. 250 grand. So there was something going on. Apparently there was like, a, I think they f- might have filed a lawsuit or looked into the the, the producers using cheap Moroccan labor. Whoa. So they're basically hiring slaves to make this movie. Jeez. Because like Not you think about how many bueno. extras there were in this movie. Yeah. Lots. Yeah. And they couldn't have all been like professional background actors. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just be like, hey, you want to be in a movie? Here's some, here's some grapes. Like, uh, I don't think we're all screen actor guild no. people. I don't think they were unionized. No. Uh, do you want to tell people what Sahara is about? Sahara is about before yeah. we uh, get into this. <laughs> yeah, it's um, historian adventure explorer type 
archetype like Indiana Jones or, or, or that kind of thing. But way more handsome. Yeah, in uh, in what's his name, Dulk Blocker Dirk, or something. Dirk <laughs> Dirk, uh, Dirk Pitt. Dulk Pitt. Dirk Pitt. I was close. <laughs> um, and so you've got him and his buddy, and they find um, that's that's uh, it's it's all good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, they find treasures. I guess is that the thing that they do? They find one. Yeah, yeah. They're they're, Histo- they're treasure hunters. And treasures, treasure yeah. hunters slash uh, history finders. Yeah. And so they are walking with this Numa place, which I've never really figured out what it was. But and they are trying to find a really old ironclad from the Civil War. It's kind of their goal. And while this is happening, they uh, the uh, WHO is finding out about, I guess, this like plague, what they think is a plague that's going on. And we have these two people that have two different missions, and they just kind of get smashed together. And uh, we figure out a lot about where are they even? Like the, the, the Ivory Coast or something? Well, they spend some of the time <clears throat> on the Niger River. Yeah. They go up the Niger River. Which and goes then, through like three countries, so yeah. I wouldn't even be able to tell you. They're in one called like Mali, like M-A-L-I. Okay, yeah. And then uh, I can't remember where else. they Because yeah. like, they, they, they throw up some graphics, some like Chiron every now and then. It's like, here we are. Now we're here. Now we're there. And I'm like, if you're looking down and making notes, you can miss it so easy. Yeah, yeah. Which I did a few times. So I yeah. just, I'm just like, eh, I'll just take their word for it wherever yeah. they are. Yeah. Because the timeline was kind of weird. The locations were kind of weird. Yeah. But it was it was an exciting movie. It was cool. No, it was. Uh, the only thing I didn't like is that uh, I was actually quite impressed because it was like only 30 seconds or something of lo- uh, of credits at, at the very beginning. And I was like, yeah. And then we go to the Civil War and we see <laughs> we see these bunch of dudes in an ironclad and they fire a cannon and they hit like a bunch of dudes in like a, I don't know, like some sort of fault, like sandbags or whatever. And they explode and all the guys in the ironclad go, yeah, and they cheer. And I'm like, I don't think that's what they did when like they hit stuff with a cannon. I don't think they were cheering. <laughs> They're not all looking out the portholes going like yeah yeah what's going on yeah (laughs) but um uh and i was like sweet you know 30 seconds that's so nice not a lot of credits and then we've get right after that (laughs) there is i wrote it down uh four and a half minutes of just credits with like establishing narrative in the background where you get like this he's expo man and you know what i mean like you get all this information through clippings and stuff that are hung up and it was four minutes of just sitting there like yep all right Cool. I thought about fast forwarding as I hit the three minute mark, and I was like, "Ah, yeah, it's probably almost there." <laughs> yeah, because there was something in there. They actually used the ship that they end up on, like right at the right at the bat, right off the bat, is the ship they used to bring up the Titanic. Oh, the actual ship back oh, in nineteen eighty, like that they filmed on. Yeah. Oh wow. Like that. Um, yeah, we we get there in a minute because I think who do we meet? Do we meet the WHO people first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with the credits. I think Numa was like nautical underwater museum or. Kind of is something like that. Something weird. Yeah. Know. Nope. So, no, that hey. sounds perfectly right. Yes. It's the National Underground <laughs> Museum Association. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're introduced to Penelope Cruz and her partner, Frank, I think his name was. Oh, uh, you don't, don't, don't do more about him. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I always do this too. <laughs> well, I think it was Frank. And uh, yeah, they, they go to this village. They're like, oh, man, sh- this person's sick. We got to find her father. Yeah. He's at the lighthouse. Goes to the lighthouse. And getting followed by this really creepy dude. Who tries to like jump her so that she finds out the and dad is sick too. We also never get we so there's no backstory on this creepy dude. Nope. And you never get any backstory on him. Nope. He's, he's just, just he's, con- consistently creepy and no ground. He's masked the entire time. Yeah. And then they fight at the end. You're like, okay, so he's obviously some bad guy. Henchman. Obviously. Yeah. And so she's like, okay, I better go get a sample from this guy. She goes back to her jeep and she gets jumped by the masked crusader. Yeah. And then uh, she runs to these other two that are like, Poof, you're in the wrong hood, homie. Yeah. They pin her. <laughs> they pin her down. I don't know what they're gonna do. And then Matthew McConaughey to the rescue. Man, he was tanned. Yo, first, first, first time you see Matthew McConaughey in this movie, shortlist. And I, I, it's, it's, it's like the centerpiece on Matthew McConaughey bingo. It's just you will see him shortlist at one point. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like diving. He jumps out of the water. You're like, damn, he did a lot of crunches for this one. Yeah, yeah. He, he comes up. I didn't realize this was going to be a full-on action movie. I didn't, yeah. I didn't expect that. So he comes in just throwing hands and yeah. uh, beats these two guys up, rescue, rescues her. I found his mustache distracting. Distracting? Distracting? They should have just said no mustache. No. Yeah. I completely disagree. What? I'm, I'm not arguing that he's handsome because he's very. He was 35 when he made this movie. I was like, damn, yeah, it's peak of his handsomeness, I think. Yeah. But well, that mustache, I'm just like, mm. no, I loved it. <sighs> loved every second of it. Well, that's fair. Yeah. To each their own. Yeah. And then she wakes up on this ship. That was the ship that they used to race the the Titanic. Yeah. And uh, I f- I was la- kind of <laughs> giggling because of the the time frame here. They're like, okay, they just hauled up this. Ancient sarcophagus full of some sort of king. 
yeah. from somewhere, and uh, Bill Macy. Hey, Bill Macy. I didn't notice he was in this because I'm looking at the credits like, oh yeah. man, there's some big names in this. But yeah, I missed, I, yeah. I missed Bill Macy's name. Yeah. And uh, he's like, I, I, this guy has a meeting in five hours. I'm like, yeah. you just pulled this thing out of the water. You haven't even opened it yet. Yeah. You don't even know what's in it. And they're yeah. like, we got to get this to the museum right now. I'm like, mm. there's no way. So this definitely, this movie kind of read like a book. So you could yeah. obvi- you could tell it was obviously based on a book because yeah. there's a lot of points where I'm like, well, how did they get from They just had here? to get there. Yes. Yeah. We just did Chapter that. Chapter break. <laughs> the last episode we did Between Worlds and it was the same thing, but worse. It was like... There was no explanation of how anybody got anywhere, and you just had to assume, all right, fine. They did it. <laughs> we believe it. Yeah. So this was kind of the same thing, but a little more enjoyable than Between Worlds was because that was garbage. Yeah. I love Steve Zahn. I was saying I haven't He's seen him in anything. Favorite, man. He's so good. I was texting you earlier this week as when I had watched the movie. I was like, this. He's my, like, just that, even just that, like, uh, I guess I'll use the word again, archetype of, like, like w- kind of nerdy, geeky sidekick guy. Is my favorite thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just, I like, I, it's just, cause I'm not, when I'm watching a movie, I'm not like, you know, I'm the Matthew McConaughey in this situation. No, I'm the uh, Steve Zahn, like, yelling at Penelope Cruz trying to fix the engine, like, just do it. <laughs> You're the Zahn of my McConaughey. Yeah, there you go. All right, all right, all yeah. right. You do have the hair for both, both movies that we watched, technically, this yeah. week. <laughs> my hairline is, I think, slowly receding, but uh, I don't know yet. Uh, Bruce Willis made it work. Well, a lot of guys made it work. I'll make it work. I think if it, if it, I think I've always had a hair a high hairline. I've yeah. looked at old picture of myself from when I was like seventeen. I'm like, Ooh, it's still the same. Still the whole. And I think because it's long, it starts to look like that when I slick it back. Yeah. And if it parts in the middle, it's even worse. Yeah. If it's part on the side, pff, no problem. No problem. Um, I can't remember what I was gonna say. It's irrelevant. Yeah. So McConaughey gets a phone call from who calls him? Who's like, hey, I found some. I found this coin. Because like he just gets a phone call and Zahn's like, did you just get a call from this guy about this ship that you're looking for on the African coast? He's like, oh, Is okay. it the guy from later that his buddy that he saved? Remember? Yeah. Oh, uh, who, 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 is who? It not, not Kazim. It's, yeah. uh, I no, Kazim's the, like, the warlock. Yeah. I couldn't remember the other guy's name. Yeah. I didn't write it down. I even watched this with subtitles. Yeah. There was a lot of names getting thrown at yeah. us and I was like, I missed that one. Yeah. I missed that one. Maybe Jaden will know. Yeah. No, I know. None of them. Know. Frank number two. So Frank, too, gives him a call <laughs> and uh, tells him, yep, I got this coin. I think I know where the ship is. You got to come here. And he's like, all right, all right, let's do yeah. it. And then uh, we have a gala ball where they take that mummy. Like, what was it? A king? A mummy? Some it sort was, of emperor? yeah. yeah. So, but in the middle of the ocean? I guess this, yeah, there's got to be a lot of stuff buried in the ocean. Yeah. There has to be. There has to be all stuff, the answers. <laughs> a lot of stuff buried in the sand, too. Yeah. <sighs> okay, well, see, okay, so... The strange thing about this coin is that it's it's a. Do we get this information in the phone call? Or, we, or he explains it right after. He, yeah. Um, it's a coin that some, uh, the civil, uh, I mean the uh, Confederate president at the uh, uh, at the time made a bunch of gold coins mm-hmm. as like Confederate currency. Um, and legend has it that they loaded them all up on this ironclad, and so the reason why is that they found that coin. In Africa, mm-hmm. right? And we, they were like, "How? How the heck? Did how it get the, yeah? Is it like did it get here with the boat or like?" My first thought was like, "Dude, it's money. Like it, it, somebody fell out of somebody's pocket." Mm-hmm. But I guess it's Confederate coin, so it's kind of more. Well, and the secret around it was that it never existed. That this guy, there's like just a tale that he made five samples uh, of it, or he made some, but nobody's ever seen it. Yeah. So when this turned up, he was like, "Oh, I got to see if this is real." Yeah. And this is where. Uh, yeah, before he leaves, we go to the ball here and we get introduced to Eve Massard. Yeah. Which we find later is the villain. Yeah. This guy's evil, man. Yeah. I can't, I, every time I see that guy, I just think of him in the Matrix. Because he's the guy that's like in the Matrix Revolutions, the second one, or Matrix Reloaded, where he's like eating steak, like, I'm going to negotiate your death. No, de Dieu, de putain de bordel de merde, de saloperie, de connard, d'enculé de ta mère, you see. Like wiping your ass with silk. I love it. Yeah, we get introduced to him, and then right afterwards, this is where Matthew Matthew McConaughey is like, "Hey, what's the name of the uh, uh, Bill Macy's character?" It doesn't matter. Yeah. Anyway, he talks to Macy. The he's admiral. Like, he's the admiral. <laughs> the admiral. He's like, "I need a boat." And he's like, "Oh man, for what?" And he's like, "I gotta go find this ship. It's yeah. on the coast of Africa. I yeah. found out where it is." He's like, "Okay, you get three days. Three days did not seem like enough time <sighs> at all. So they do a lot of stuff in the first day and a half." Like a lot of stuff. Is it ever nighttime? Uh-huh. When they get on the boat. So, okay, so he gets, he's like, all right, you can have my boat for 72 hours. Give him a sweet boat. That's like a sweet little boat. I like that thing. 
And he ends up having to take the doctor, Frank, and uh, what was her name? Ava? Ava. Ava and Frank up the river as well. And he's like, oh, man. All right, hop on. So they, yeah, they end up going to the boat. We get a little montage. Well, because she the river. wants to go somewhere, right, with them she to think, check out that. I think she wanted to go to disease? Molly, yeah. Molly, because that's where they think that this disease is starting. Yeah. So they all hop in the boat. And there is, yeah, there's a night scene where Frank's cooking and he's like, oh, you're pulling your weight, Frank. So they come out and he's like, Steve Zahn's like, it's my watch. And they're sitting out there in the dark having dinner. And this is where McConaughey's explaining the story of the ironclad to oh, okay. Ava. So that's like, that's the first 24 hours right there. Yeah. Like, okay, you haven't even made it to where you need to go. Yeah. Until like the next day they show up in this place and that's where they part ways. And uh, I thought they did a great job of having the two different storylines kind of bouncing back and forth. Yeah. And they tied them together well, but with no explanation again. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I think, I think also like um, knowing what we know later, uh, I think it was actually pretty well done because I... Even having read the book and watched the movie, I didn't know that these two things, like those two storylines, were going to be so connected. Mm-hmm. And so when it happened, I was like, "Oh yeah, I remember that now." But like, I I was in, I was in, I was in the movie for a while of being all like, "Oh what? You're like what is this disease? Like what's going on?" And so I was like, kind of interested. <laughs> I was laughing because you sent me a picture of your notes because I'm like, I'm watching this tonight, and I like yeah. zoom in on your notes, and it's like I just remembered I read this book. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah like, that, that's thought it. He, thought he knew the story. Yeah. I didn't realize it was written in 92 as well. It's an old story. Yeah. And it kind of makes sense because there was a few lines in this where I'm like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a 1992 line that they yeah. just delivered. Yeah, yeah. Nobody cares about Africa. It's like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Rain, yeah. Rain Wilson uh, uh, um, is in this movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he's, I, he's hilarious, I think. He's another great sidekick character mm-hmm. in a lot of movies. Yeah. I, re- I really like him. Yeah. And I think this was, when was The Office? Like, when did The Office come out? Do you know? The Office. Was it 05? Or even earlier? As I feel like this was in the midst. It stopped in like 2015 or something like that. It had 10 seasons. Yeah. So yeah, this so would yeah. have been right around the start of The Office. I wonder yeah. if maybe this was like his. Someone's like, hey, he'd be good in The Office. Like, no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Split ways, Massard goes and meets Kazim. And he's explaining to him, uh, oh, there's this doctor. Oh, yeah, because the doctors talk to uh, Massard at the ball. And like, hey, there's people dying. You need to look into this. And he's like, oh, I'll talk to my warlord friend and I'll figure it out for you. See what I can do. So he goes to meet Kazim and he explains to him what's going on. And Kazim's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I don't really care. You know, it's bullshit. But find this doctor because I want to talk to her. Yeah. See what she's talking about. Yeah. So this next scene, the guys are on the boat and they get approached by these other soldiers on boats because they're like, we know that the doctors came with you. Let's go question these guys. Mm. And they just, they're like, nah, we're going to run. And they just take, like, they hook onto their boat. They're like, all right, punch it. Yeah. It was pretty off. sick. <laughs> it was pretty sweet. And then there's like this whole boat chase action scene, which was yeah. just unbelievable. But it was exciting. It, yeah. was, it was fun. Yeah. No, and it was, like, yeah, it was absolutely uh, impossible. <laughs> the whole thing. Well, what baffles me is that you're shooting that many shells at somebody. How are you not shooting someone? Like how are, yeah, are you? All, how nobody. are you all not? There's not that shots? many people on on that boat. Yeah, you even get like sideswiped by a boat. McConaughey falls on the other boat. Has like a classic Indiana Jones fight with a guy that's bigger than him. Yeah, beats him up, kicks him off the boat, gets shot at a dozen times from the back of the boat. And I I enjoyed how they're having basically a conversation. Like, hey, you're gonna do this. Jump on the front of the boat. Yeah. What do you mean I'm gonna jump on the front of the boat? Just do what I say. I'm like, how do you guys hear each other? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of yeah. loud. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. And like, so I guess um the and and the background, I guess, of, of all that is that uh, Matthew McConaughey and Steve Zahn have like n- they were like best friends the whole life, but I guess they were both in the Navy. Mm-hmm. Like they've got I guess a military background, so that's why they're that's kind of the guise of why they were why they're so able to, <laughs> yeah, I guess not get shot. I guess they were able to John Travolta and Pulp Fiction their way out of things. <laughs> or Nicolas Cage in... Uh... And apparently McConaughey wanted to do all of his own stunts in this, but the insurance company wouldn't cover him. But he did do that jump from one boat to the other. Really? He did that one, That's which, pretty sick. which was pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, later on, with the train jumps, nobody could do that. So it was the, the trainer that did all of the jumps. What? Yeah, see, I read this stuff. Yeah, and also I didn't know camels. This is later, but I didn't know camels could run that fast, and I've got a problem with it. So we'll they, see. <laughs> <laughs> they they can they can haul ass apparently. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Rain Wilson nails him with a flare gun, blows up that jeep, 
and they pull a Panama. This is this was an unbelievable part. They're like, we're going to do a Panama. We're doing a Panama. Yeah. What's a Panama? <laughs> and they shove a cigar into the behind the gas line. We all know from analyzing these movies that cigarettes and cigars do not ignite gasoline. Yeah. So the Panama wouldn't have worked. And even if it did, how'd they time it so perfectly to blow up both boats at the same time? Unbelievable. Well, I mean, we do know it didn't really work the first time. So they've got some practice. <laughs> yeah, make it shorter. Yeah. Cut the cigar in half. Yeah. Yeah. And then all wait, of a sudden, are you wait, look at me in the face. That won't work. What? No. Why not? Fire, gas. Because I've actually watched <laughs> I remember when I was in probably like grade seven, we had to make these, these Have we had this exact conversation we before? We probably have. Yeah. yeah. Because they're I'll, I'll cut it in right here, I'll find it. Sai Anara. And like I was telling you, the cigarette into the gas doesn't work. That's insane, too. Is that a is that a childhood story, or do you well, just know that? Well, from like I knew that from. So this is hilarious. So in junior high school, like grade eight, we had to make yeah. videos. Yeah. I can't remember what the fucking class was. We had to make a video. It's not, this story and, is already not as cool as I thought it was going to be. You said well, up. okay, here we go. <laughs> I watched a, a video that my my classmates had made. They yeah. had, took like a like a. Toy we have car. had this. You know yeah. why? And I just realized now. Uh, <laughs> like you like uh, me in the face. Which yeah. Because <laughs> uh, Con Air, he says hasta la vista, and he throws the Sci- thing up, and you're like, Nara. no, yeah, oh, sorry, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't work. You need like an open flame because a, an like a, a burning ember just won't do it. Oh well then. Yeah. So the Panama wouldn't have worked. Would have failed God again, damn, and they would have been stuck. Yeah. There was so many times where I was like, this, this is too, this is, you're like, you've built it up too much at this point for them to be able to get out of, of the situation every time. It's like, and the whole situation, like every single, like, because you get, we talked about it, you get like these, there's like slow build up, huge action sequence, kind of slow build up, huge ac- action sequence is kind of how the movie was laid out. And every time the action sequence gets bigger and more unbelievable, and they still are just fine mm-hmm. every time. Like those more people at the end, they're fucking, it's a whole army. <laughs> it's yeah. It, it's this is to me. This was a classic early two thousands. Like yeah, America for the win kind yeah. of movie. Triumphant music. The the soundtrack I made a note was just specifically geared towards people in their forties, fifties, and sixties because it's all classic rock, yeah. classic American rock. You're yeah. Like, oh yeah, there's fortunate son. Yeah. And like you know, it's all that that I was same. stoked. 100.3 The Q. Yeah, no, I was stoked about it. I <laughs> love stuff like that. I do like those old songs. Yeah. Oh, God, I'm getting old. So when when he shoots him with that flare gun, like... Dead shot right into the window. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I've never shot a flare gun. I can't imagine it's that accurate. No. I think they're actually built to not, like, because you're supposed to fire them straight up in the air. Like, they're not built for accuracy. Like, they mm. fucking, you know what I mean? Where did he shoot the first one? Uh, I don't know. Doesn't matter, shoots it up in the air. He's like, yeah, Should yeah. I signal for help? No, shoot the Jeep. <laughs> so now they get camels. This is 45 minutes into the movie. Yeah. And they just get camels. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, Okay, where'd they get the camels? All right, they must have bought them because they blow their boat up. So they blow up all their supplies. I don't think they have any money. I don't know what they traded to get those camels or they stole them or they beat up the people who own the camels because now they have their clothes. I didn't think about that at all. <laughs> See, these are the things. Being they had their doing clothes. This, they had, yeah, they because they know we're wearing they're wearing their stuff underneath, but they had but they jumped off on. a boat. They don't have any of their stuff anymore. And then they had full desert get up. Yep, wrap head head whatever you call that thing burka. Yeah, they had burkas. They had the full desert desert wear. They camels, had camels can't be cheap, man. And where where are they getting water and food? Nobody eats in this movie. Nobody even drinks in the. Oh, they I think they have a they have dinner at that uh, restaurant in Africa. Once. At somewhere, so and then once. that's it. And we don't even see the meat. Nope. Yeah. So I, not, have a, I have an issue with that because yeah. you're in the, yeah, you got to be drinking water. Water should be your number one priority in the desert. Yeah. And you're running around, running around, riding camels, fighting people. Yeah. Running through the sand, rolling yeah. around, shooting stuff. You're going to be tired. Yeah. You're going to be thirsty. And dehydration yeah. is like the number one killer. And it can kill you in three days. And we know yeah. 72 hours. Yeah. That's yeah. all the time they have. They didn't, yeah. bring, they didn't bring water. No. Even when they're walking up to get on their boat earlier, they're like, oh, man, that's a lot of supplies. Think you have enough supplies? And the who doctors are like, no, I don't think that's enough. What I... Um, <laughs> yeah, where's your water? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just all medical supplies, no water. Um, oh, and you were saying that 72 hours thing, I realized, because I wrote this note, and when you said it, I didn't know why I'd written it. But um, the admiral goes, 72 hours, and not a, uh, not a nanosecond later. And I was like, how many nanoseconds are in 72 hours? 
lot. I know how many. I know how many. Two point <laughs> five nine two e plus fourteen. <laughs> That's a lot of zeros. Yeah. I think two hundred and fifty nine thousand two hundred seconds. Wow. And I didn't do any math after that, which <laughs> yeah. would have been the helpful math. You're like this is enough. We're yeah. good. So now these doctors have just found this. They found the village they were looking for, and they're like, "Okay, we found a well. Let's check out the well." Ava goes down there, um, starts digging a hole, gets a water sample, and then all of a sudden, pow, 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 pow people are just yeah. getting murked up top. Yeah, that's it. What you? <laughs> I literally, uh, uh, I don't know what this note means, but it says <laughs> the well scene. Mulked Frank Presnos, <laughs> and I don't, I don't know what any of. Oh, the president of the African country knows about the, um, the poison or the not the yeah, the, well, yeah, the poison, the poison, yeah. So the Kazim, I think, is who I'm talking about there. Yes. Um, knows about this about this poison. So we get a connection of, of the leader of the government is he knows something about this poison. Mm-hmm. And he then, doesn't actually seem to know where the source is. I don't think. No, he does like because we talk about it later. Oh, oh. yeah. Him and him and uh, um, Eves. Eves. So this is my question here: is how the heck did Al and Dirk know where to go when they got those camels? Like, why are they all of a sudden in the village where Ava and Frank are? Yeah, why like, were they? Even... They were they were going two different directions. Yeah. They never talked about hey, let's meet up in this little village. Yeah. Unless they did, and I missed it, but I don't think so. No. Because I was paying pretty close attention to this movie. Yeah. And they just all of a sudden show up, and I'm like, this is a little too convenient. But yeah. you got to suspend your belief, I guess, or disbelief or whatever this is. Is it belief or disbelief? What am I suspending here? Your disbelief. Suspending my disbelief. Yeah, because you want it. You're believing, so you're, you're suspending not believing. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. Um, unless it's one of those. It's not a double negative. No. Then yeah. you to, so if somebody was like, I believe this, and you're like, well, you're wrong. So you just suspend your belief, and then I'll tell you some information. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. All right, uh-huh. we're learning stuff. See, welcome to real garbage. You can learn stuff here. <laughs> Everyone's so, like, we knew that already. Yeah. Everyone knew that already. Idiot. <laughs> God, this guy's stupid. Yeah. So then a big fight, big shootout. This was pretty cool. And I, I did uh, when I was reading the trivia, I did mention to you that uh, Steve Zahn was really comfortable with guns because he's a bit of a history nut, so yeah. he's he's had experience with them. Yeah. So it is cool watching somebody experience like you know pulling the clip out, like bam, knows exactly what he's doing, shooting bad guys. Pretty brave just running at that one sniper. I literally, that's so funny that you keep saying these things because my <laughs> yeah. next thing is, is oh, that's, that's the other. It literally says, runs in front of sniper. Yep. <laughs> and that guy was like, that was a full-on sniper rifle. Yeah. Big scope on it and everything. I don't know how he didn't hit him. And then he just sneaks up on him somehow. He like runs around. Sniper guy's like, oh, must yeah. have lost him. And then yeah. all of a sudden, oh, it's behind him and pow, <laughs> yeah. he'll gun. And then probably said, hi, how are you? Yeah, hi, how are you? No, hi, how are you doing? What was it? I wrote it down. <laughs> I'm going to cut a little, uh, I think I'll cut together a little montage of him saying that. Yeah, uh, yeah, hi, how are you? He says it like hey, three, how are five, you? at least three or four times. <laughs> it must be like his movie things. I think he said that to a raccoon in Saving Silverman, too. Yeah. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Where's your mommy? <laughs> Just, you did a really good, I, I want you to cut the video of you doing that, because the eyebrow raise that you did is exactly the way he did it. Hey, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta nail that, and then see. Okay, I like to climb. I boulder. I climb, yeah, yeah. and it's tiring. She scales the well. Yeah, the well's got to be like seventy feet deep. Yeah, and she Bricks, just, like like just just like no problem. Those yeah. are all pinchers. You're yeah. gonna be exhausted after twelve feet. She's yeah. gonna fall. No way she got out of there. She died in that well. Yeah, she. <laughs> They're using a robot. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, he's dead the whole time. What did I read? They wanted to get Salma Hayek to do this first, but because. For some weird reason, uh, it was going to cost them like $20 million to get her. I think Penelope Cruz only cost her like $3.5 million. When you said Selma Hayek, I was like, they did get Selma Hayek to do it. No. No. <gasps> you racist. <laughs> yeah. They all look the same. And, and, uh, and, <laughs> I, and whatever. Misogynist, too. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so they, 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 they save the day. Everybody kills all the bad guys. Everybody escapes unscathed, and they're like, all right, we figured it out. Let's get this Jeep and get out of here. Yeah. Every time in this movie when um, they just, they use guns, I guess, for fun in this movie because nobody ever dies by getting shot. And halfway through some fight scenes like this one, they just start like fist fighting and like like wrestling and stuff instead of using the guns. Like there's just... I guess fists are more powerful than guns when you're in the desert? I, I mean, that sounds like science, so I can't really <laughs> argue with you. I can't disprove it. You heard it here, folks. Yeah. Fists are more powerful. Fists are more powerful. Uh, so they, they're driving through the desert. We get a glimpse of the tour eggs, and he pulls it. Like, I don't know how McConaughey... Well, actually, okay. Matthew McConaughey, before they shot this movie, he actually traveled up the Niger River 
for okay. like a couple months Fucking getting posing. the lay of the land, Just and he took a bunch of pictures. He's, he's a beauty. Amazing. Posing. I finished. I read his book or listened to his audio book, Green Lights. Oh, the new one? It's, it's fucking I, weird. Man. I like I liked it though. Prescribe. <laughs> um so he went through there and they actually used his photos as like research and stuff. So it was interesting when he's pulling up there and he's like, ooh, he's slowing down. He's like, all right, put your guns down. All right, yeah. I'm gonna get out and put your hands up. Don't move too fast. And yeah. then there's like a thousand Touareg soldiers just ah, yeah, yeah. show up and take him to that little town where he meets his other friend. Like, and, like there's just so many weird, mysterious strangers they meet. Then the other friend is Frank too. Yes, yes. Yeah. So they go meet Frank too. And Which also might be racist now that I say it. <laughs> so this is where they find out that it's poison. And because she has a sample and he's like, yeah, yeah. So he tells Frank too that it's like, yep, yeah, there's somebody's being, po- uh, somebody's poisoning your people. Yeah. We got to get to the bottom. It's like insane thing. amount of red algae or something like that. Yeah, yeah. it's right. It's red algae in yeah. fresh water, which shouldn't be there because it only shows up in salt water, apparently. Yeah. We get it every now and then in Brentwood Bay in the summer. It's gross. Yeah. yeah. So I watched my friend fall into it once. I was like, ugh. Get back and on your board. So they get out of this Jeep, and Matthew McConaughey has nothing on him. I oh, just one gun, and he puts down his one gun, and then Al just, just comic amount <laughs> of guns just coming from every single thing. <laughs> I did like that. the 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 comedic side of this movie was great. Yeah. Uh, so I was thinking of this when I wrote this down. So they're poisoning people, and I thought because we learn later it's not intentional. Yeah. But I thought I'm like, is this population control? And I started thinking. Because like Bill Burr's got his bit about population control where he's like, I just blow up a cruise ship every week. Just 3,000 yeah. people on a cruise ship. Bomb that. Building yeah. new cruise ships. Creating jobs. Joke freeing up style, traffic. Yeah. It's so good. But I'm like, how would we, how would you trap, how would you populate control, how would you control the population of Canadians? And I'm like, two for one sales, man. Buy one, get one free. Lure them into a big box store. Nerve gas. Take their keys. Move the cars. Keep the sale going. Dude, you're thinking too much, man. You just... Just we, put poison in the double doubles, no, man. We just, lo- that, oh, they wow. have an automatic Ooh. machine. Just dump it in there. You're Ooh, good. Damn, that's yeah. even easier. Shit. Yeah. Slow acting poison. So they get home, finish their double double, die at home. Yeah, something's going on. Why? Make, what's make with it, you? What's with you in body disposal? Why are you so obsessed with? <laughs> no reason. No reason at all. No, no, I'm just. I'm this, just we're just talking out loud. Just we're out talking loud. about mass population motor. There's like you can't. You know, it's not. <laughs> just think it out loud, man. Just think it out loud. No, a lot of traffic coming up here. Yeah, a lot of acid. <laughs> I haven't done that in a while. I'm trying to get more. <laughs> you know that's not what I meant. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, they're they're in this town and uh, perfectly convenient soccer bounce that Steve Zahn does. He's like, I'm going it's for the record. Stupid. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Whoop-psh! Yeah. Kicks it down a massive trail, down a flight of stairs into a room, conveniently yeah. with a wall painted of the ironclad yeah. and everything leading up to it and yeah. how it got there. So this and also they- like, what was that place? Anyway, it wasn't like a storage, room. A it was like, room kind but of it was like a cave almost. But it seemed like it was open on both sides. It was almost like this, just like the shortcut from lower village to upper village kind of thing. Yeah, and it seemed like it was very easily accessible. <laughs> All roads led to that one place. It's like if it rained, I bet you there'd be so much water in that place. Maybe it was their pool. Yeah. <laughs> so they kind of draw this conclusion. They're like, okay, so. This ship got here when this used to be a river. Yeah. Like, but it's dried up like 150 years ago. So, oh, the river's underground. <gasps> That's how the poison's getting around. Yeah. But because yeah, they found poison in one spot and then they found it 300 miles away. Yeah. No connect. No like like poison connection. Mm-hmm. Like again, suspension of d- disbelief, I guess, because I was just like, I wrote earlier like. They're just walking around Africa being like, you ever seen a boat? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I guess it's like, oh, it was a big boat <laughs> that looked it's different. a metal big boat. Yeah, but at the same time, it's just like, I don't know. Like, do you really think that this this town was like, crazy boat, let's draw these pictures and have them last for who knows how long, hundreds of years? Well, I would think that if you're in the middle of a desert and you see a boat, you might want to document it, I guess. I guess it, it and would then, seem out of place. Do you? But but when we find the boat finally, which we do, because the, again, this is where I forgot because I, I I forgot halfway through this movie that we were even looking for this boat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when we get to the boat, how did it get there? That wasn't a didn't look like a river bed. It wasn't like this. It was by the side of a like canyon mountain thing. Mm, and that's you know I mean? another spot where you got to be like, oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And it was just there. And like, wait, does that mean that because they were like this this whole area used to be lush farmlands? And I was like, this was 1860 fall. It's not that freaking long ago, man. Three people ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. But 
And so, like, we can't be, I can't, you know, does does desertification happens that fast? I actually don't know. Maybe. Well, I, I guess climate change is real. <laughs> so it's probably more. It's probably amplified yeah. in the desert. But that means that when they're 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 going up the river in this big ironclad boat. And what happens? They just like run up, run aground like the Ever Given in the Suez <laughs> yeah, Canal, and they just fuck. <laughs> and then they're there for hundreds of years, and that's it. Like they just stopped, and they were like, "Well, all this gold, I guess we'll die here." Well, and apparently they decided to just stay in the boat. Yeah, exactly. Because when the- she falls through, they're all in the same. Like it was a weird mass cult suicide in the bottom of this ironclad. I'll drink the Kool Aid, man. Yeah, <laughs> that seemed a little strange. Yeah. Anyways. So yeah, in the midst of this as well, I'm saying that a lot in the midst of this, they send uh, Rudy back, uh, Rain Wilson, to inform Sandecker. Sandecker, that's his name. Nice. Admiral, Admiral Sandecker. Sandecker. So they tell Sandecker that his boat has been destroyed. And I love the, his line, like, because he just wakes up, he's been sleeping on his couch. He's like, oh, Colonel Sandecker, Admiral Sandecker, I have to tell you about your boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, that was pretty good. And also, like, um, so at this point, we have also seen that uh, Yves... Um, and, and, uh, uh, Kazim? and Kazim, uh, to, 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 to get, well, not together. In They're, cahoots? Yeah, in cahoots. <laughs> um, uh, uh, it'd be a different movie. <laughs> um, but, uh, and so we know that he's somebody, Eves is some French dude, and then Kazim is this kind of wallowed president of this country, mm-hmm. and they're doing something together because they met and they were talking about how, you know, the poison... They knew. They both knew about it, um, because the warlord Kazim was planning some sort of attack on something, because he was mobilizing units. Oh, that's right. The tanks. Yeah, the tanks. Yeah. They didn't. I didn't see that. This. That's the thing about this movie is that they left a lot of the reveals yeah. till the end. You're yeah. like, man, like you're sure you're keeping us on the hook here. Yeah. For a lot of that. And that's why I said, like, the first half of this movie was like, oh, my God, there's a lot of information. You yeah. gotta pay attention. You got to keep tabs on what's going on. And then at the end, it's just like, Brah, here's everything you were worried about or wondering about. Yeah. And then this is where they find Massard Enterprises. So it's this next scene, yeah. like, they're wandering. So I can't remember how why they decided to just walk in that direction. Because because the, the painting in the room... <gasps> Had like like literally like a an eight year old like dotted line <laughs> like like you're here dot 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 big boat here and Next so there this structure exactly that's probably where it is so they went to this this like weird structure which is funny because they walk in the direction and they find like this little rundown kind of ruined uh, thing like this. Just a couple of walls. You, it looked like something from the first scene in, in the Mummy, if you've ever seen the Mummy. Oh yeah, <laughs> Which first is, one there wins. Exactly. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. So that just like like five walls, and you know what I mean, like in the middle of the desert. And he's like, "This is the place. We found it." Yeah, like, exactly. You think? Yeah. <laughs> I guess it kind of looks like the drawing. Yeah. Oh, so they go to this thing, and it's like yeah, like five walls, and it's all ruined. And I I don't remember why they're there specifically. Because they uh, in the drawing, the ship was next to that. Oh, okay. They're like, oh, so it seems to be right next to a big structure. So we yeah. find that structure, we find the ship. Yeah, and so they find the structure, and then the camera, like, I don't know, I forget what happens there. Maybe somebody shoots at them, something like that. But then the camera pans up, and there's this fucking giant-ass solo plant behind it. And it's like, why, like, I guess the solo plant wasn't there when the picture was were drawn. Mm-hmm. But if you were walking up to the structure, I feel like you would have seen the solo plant and been like, what the fuck's going on there? And not go to the structure and be like, who wonder? Well, they, it seemed like they went down into a dip. And then they went across that. So that's like the old riverbed. Because he does say, he's like, hey, think about it. If we were here 150 years ago, we'd be swimming. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does say that. And then I think they come up over the other side of it. And that's when they look down. They're like, oh, what is this? Yeah. Big ass tower. Yeah. But yeah, like you said, you would have seen a bit of that tower. Yeah. So it's pretty damn tall. Yeah. Tower would have been towering over the other side of the river. And be like, hey, what's that? Let's go for that. Yeah. And this is where we find Massard Enterprises. It's the massive toxic waste dump. And they're like, well, we got to get in there. How are we going to get in there? Yeah. Well, it just looks like a solo plant from the outside. Mm-hmm. And then I... It's all very... It's fenced off, lots of heavily guarded. Yeah. And my problem is that, again, it's... it's. I guess it's from the writing it as a book, like you were saying, because they were like, how are we going to get in there? And then the, the plan... We'll talk about the plan in a second, which because it is actually a pretty funny it's pretty plan. pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, but so they get... They tell you how they get past the initial two guards... Right, but it looked like there was a ton of guards, and then all of a sudden, next scene, they're just inside the building, like in like a tunnel in the inside of the building. Like, I well, don't think there's a fucking like you just walk through the front door and then you're in the back tunnels. Like, how do you know your way around a solo plant? I have no idea. Exactly. How, I don't even know how they knew the train. I didn't see yeah. any train tracks. I don't know how they knew the train was going to go take them in there. Yeah, they just assumed and yeah. and 
not like you wouldn't even know when the train was coming in. Yeah. But they're just like, oh, this is convenient. Let's go to those train tracks. Let's go down a couple of miles because they had to go a couple miles because yeah. that train was was hauling ass pretty good. Yeah. But this plan was pretty sweet. I loved how they yeah. sat their camels down. Yeah. Buried, so they buried themselves in sand. Yeah. And then got on their camels, chased, which was so waited till the train went by. Yeah. And the first, the first guy, uh, the train was going. And if these guards did even one percent of their jobs, this would not have been possible. Nope. So they're going down the thing, and there's three camels sitting on the side of the trains. And he goes, <laughs> "Oh, camels exist, I guess. Like, I guess it is the desert." So he's like, "Those are, it's fine." Um, which to me, I'm like, not fine. <laughs> sitting in a row, yeah, not fine. Like, directly not fine. Looks really weird. Oh, yeah, whatever. So the train rips by him. Which, how do you even time that out from how far they were away? Doesn't matter. So they hop out like the Undertaker from <laughs> fucking the sand, just jumping on their camels. Ooh. Yeah, and then I don't know, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> it's just in my nightmares. I wake up. Um, no, uh, and then they get on their camels. Camels cannot run that fast. There's no way. I, I didn't uh, Google how fast. Do you want to Google how fast camels can run? Let's do it. Oh, <gasps> oh, it didn't fall on your computer, thankfully. Oh. Damn, that could have been bad. Oh. Crisis averted. It's all okay. <laughs> yeah. How fast is a fucking camel? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my fuck it! I'll tell you right now. Okay, hold on, hold on. What's your guess? What's your top oh. speed guess in miles per hour? Because they're gonna give it to you in miles. Okay, so I haven't looked it up yet. <sighs> I'm gonna say I don't know how fast things are. I'm gonna say 37 miles per hour, which is about I want to say high 60s, low 70s kilometers an hour. I think. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one and a half. So 37 would be plus you. Plus 18 to it. Yeah, it's like 1.6 or something, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to say about 37 miles an hour. That's my guess. I'm going to go 20, 26. All right. Okay. Drum roll. Actual retail price. 65 kilometers an hour. Oh, oh dude, kilometers. I was, I 40 was... miles per hour. Woo! You were fucking really close. Holy yeah. shit. And you also, like, guessed, like, you did the conversion pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck um, yeah. So how fast that train was going pretty quick. So I guess they would have been. And I apparently they did all this camel 65 riding. 65 kilometers an hour is pretty fucking it is fast. That's pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. They did all this camel riding practice for the movie so they could ride. I guess they worked up to running next to a train for 90 minutes, which was wild. And Just then, running beside it? Oh, because yeah, so, I guess the filming would like you have to take those. Oh, and those one scenes. neat thing about uh, filming in the desert is that a lot of the shots were one take because. You leave footprints in the sand. So they'd have to oh shoot a lot God. of stuff one take. Yeah, and like when they're, because we're not there yet, but when they're in the dunes with the truck, like that I would mean, all have to be one. Lots of stuff done in one take, which is crazy. Oh, wow. Like, I think, didn't about, even think about Think that. about how many times, like, if, because they shot for months, like yeah. months, and think about it, like if something didn't go right first, or like, damn, well, we got to wait till tomorrow because we got to wait till the light's right again. We yeah. got to shoot the same direction because you can't just go, hey, let's just spin around and, yeah. and shoot it the other way. Yeah. And so not like, only that, but like if you think about it, like w once you walk through something, you can't just like wake it. It's yeah. not like it won't look normal. You know what I mean? Like a Call little in the desert. Yeah, like a Zen garden. Just fucking. <laughs> we haven't found anything, sir. Yeah. <laughs> um, we ain't found shit. So they run. So they run up along the tr side of the train, sixty-five kilometers an hour. Yep. If if these fucking top performance camels, by the way, <laughs> I think they peak are. peak camel. <laughs> uh, uh, um, they don't look like peak camels. <laughs> then again, camels just kind of look. Weird. I don't even know how you tell if a camel like that's a prize camel right there. How can you <laughs> tell, sir? Well, let me tell you. Yeah. Um, so and they run up beside it, and and there's so there's a, a guy at the back, front of the train and the back of the train. And this guy sees three camels, doesn't say anything. I feel like communication is key here. Why does nobody communicate? If you're a guard, I like I am I uh, I work with children, I'm an EA, and I have a walkie talkie. Okay, at 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 a, at a school. I think you know they have got guns. They can talk to each other. I feel like, but they don't. And so they're running along the side of the train. They jump on one of the time. Of course, Eva. Uh, what, what's her name? Penelope Cruz can't do it. Eva, right? Eva. 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 Um, Eva. It's Eva. Eva. Um. And anyways. Eva. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I mean, uh, there's so many times in this movie where uh, I realized that it was from whatever, 2005 or whenever it was from, because um, uh, in the first scene, Matthew McConaughey has to save Penelope Cruz. You know what I mean? Uh, later, he has to save her from the well. <laughs> 
And then now she can't jump on the train, so he has to like fucking like big <laughs> Benno onto the train, which is insane, by the way. Oh yeah, he's like dislocated he's shoulder, with one arm. Yeah, and he's swinging her. I don't care how light you are. That's yeah. tough. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wild. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, and uh, I was saying earlier that when they, the only person that could make the jump to the train was the camel trainer. So he did the jumps for everybody. Even Hall? Yep. Yep. He was the only person that could make that jump. Wow. Oh, I'm not sure about her. It did, in the trivia, it did say that he made all the jumps. Yeah. So I don't know. I put could, a wig on him. It, yeah, it looked like her. Yeah. Oh, speaking of wigs, I got a comment about a guy later. <sighs> So oh, Drive Angry? There's a, there's a, no, there's a funny ass toupee in this movie. Oh, wait, my no, God. Wait, no, I no, missed it. Isn't drive Angry. Yeah, it is a Drive <laughs> Angry. Yeah. No, because I wrote it down to. <laughs> okay. Uh, 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 that's for two weeks from now. <laughs> um, uh, no. Uh, so they all get on top of this train. Um, but my thing is the guy at the back of the train sees one camel now walking go goes, by. Whoa. And he goes, Oh, that's a camel. Which Weird. I guess. Are camels just loose? Are they like like horses in, in the you know Midwest? Well, are in, horses even loose? Though? In like the 1700s. <laughs> well, I don't know. 2005, just random horses. Yeah. Well, so he sees one horse that like has stuff on it. I ropes, I guess. So <laughs> whatever the camel. Oh, had on like it. A, a bit and a and a, a lead rope. Yeah, like yeah. A, like somebody was using. It's not a loose wild camel. If if know, that is a thing. There's stuff draped on it. There's yeah, a exactly. saddle on it. Yeah. And so he sees one go by and he goes, "Oh, that's like a camel that." Wild, and then he sees another one go by, and he goes, "Oh, even more concerning." But he does; he doesn't even <laughs> stand up. He's just like, "Whoa!" And then finally, he sees a third one as this fucking soak de soleil act is happening on the side of the train, and he sees the third camel go by, and he goes, "Now I should definitely check because there's <laughs> been three. There's no way." And Third he looks, the charm. and I guess. I, there's no way because it took him so long to stand up and look that the whole time you're like, okay, he's not gonna. I know he's not gonna see them, but now you're just playing it out so long. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and he peeks, he peeks around the corner, and just as like they're both getting up, there's no way that he would have seen them. He would have been like, there's three people on the top of the train. Yeah, but no, that's pretty silly. Yeah, we had to suspend our disbelief. Here. Yeah. <laughs> so they get inside this place on the train. This place looked like the inside of Doctor Evil's lair. When they get into this toxic waste, stuff, yeah. the first thing I thought was like, "This looks like Doctor Evil." It there. looks like it looks like a way shittier version of the Elon Musk's uh, under Las Vegas Tesla systems. Have you seen those? No, I haven't seen them. They're yet. just like tunnels. They're just literally like tunnels that can fit one Tesla in them. I knew he was. Well, they're going to allow other cars, aren't they? I don't think so. It's a I think Tesla it's all, only tunnel. Yeah, I think it's a what? Yeah, that's pretty exclusive. And, and not only that, but it's just like it's uh, the whole point was like it's supposed to. There's this huge campus, and it's supposed to like be able to go so you can get from instead of walking 45 minutes you can just take a uber three minutes to the other side but that's literally what it is it's just a bunch of people they're not even robot cars yet they're just uber people underground like gremlins just driving people around creepy i wouldn't want yeah. to be so i didn't realize it was just a tesla exclusive tunnel yeah, right yeah. now because he has been they have been working on tunnels for everybody yeah, yeah. because they want to alleviate um traffic congestion yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is a cool idea. Well, they just canceled the one in uh, L.A. They just can't. They just well, they didn't even cancel it. They just <sighs> wiped it from their website. No really? Thing. Yeah. Just, so they didn't mention it, and it's been in progress for years. So I assume that can't be good if they're just like, never mind. Well, just I wonder like what would happen in the event of a massive storm in California, like, just because uh -huh. the weather's changing, right? What uh -huh. if they get a big rainstorm and those uh -huh. things flood? Earthquake, dude. That's where oh. earthquakes happen. Yeah. Yeah. I would not want to be in a tunnel. So, yeah. anyways, they're in these tunnels, <laughs> and um, uh, we. Well, going down, and we see a bunch of barrels going into an incinerator, and it's chemical waste. You, I think you already said that. Yes, and we didn't yes. know that till now. Yeah, like a toxic, it had the uh, biohazard symbols on the cans. Yeah, and like, so oh, they're okay. using all the solar panels to get enough energy to fucking just incinerate it completely. Yeah, does that work? Well, Eves says it works, but... Okay, well, I don't fucking trust that guy. Oh, me neither. He's <laughs> shady. He's a shady guy. Yeah. Because it... Like the the reason that the the waste is leaching into the ground is because they they can't incinerate it fast enough and they have to store it for a while. Oh, or because something like that. He was saying that like um because I think he was talking to Kazim. Oh no, maybe it was Hole later, but he was kind of saying like like we're trying to do a good thing here, which mm -hmm. is kind of true. Like like he is trying to get rid of this waste appropriately, but. He was like, well, we're in the fucking desert where the sun is to get the solar things, but that means there's dust and the, I guess the, the chips nice. get, the, the, the panels get chipped or cracked or whatever. That's what it was. And um, so it slows down production. So they've got to, I guess, yeah, take these ones and just throw them into a... A very disgusting, dirty looking... Yeah, chamber cave. of secrets. Yeah, like... <laughs> 
Yeah. Like the, the vault at Gringotts. Yeah. And, Gr- and, Gringotts. And the uh, radiation alone would kill anybody. Well, that's what I was thinking. Was it? Was it, it didn't have the radioactive symbol on it. It just had the biohazard symbol on it. Because they, they opened that door. Wait, uh, hold on. The, this whole place is heavily guarded. I wanted to discuss this. I noticed that every guard has a gun. Could Now, what? It would be really uncomfortable working in a place where everybody is armed. To think about this. You're just working with random dudes. It's not like you're all friends. You don't all have breaks together and stuff. You're working in a place with 100 guards that all have guns. How many coworkers have you had in your life where you're like, man, I'm so glad that guy doesn't have a gun? Like, th- there would definitely be, I'd be worried. There have to be gun safety courses and classes and stuff there. Like, they'd have to have some sort of OSHA training. You'd hope. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't want to work with people with guns. I just wouldn't. This is not, not, not my this style. Is, this is... It's Africa. Well, no, and nobody cares about Africa. It's, it's a quote from the movie. <laughs> it's a quote from the movie. And so I don't think... OSHA is necessarily going to this top. I th- and even if they will, I think, yeah, you have a gun, but maybe all this nuclear waste is the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right, all right, okay, fine. <laughs> but yeah, they opened the door to this nuclear, uh, well, this great toxic waste spot, and I was like, this would be killing them right now. Then I thought, oh, wait, hold on. It's toxic, so if you don't touch it, you should be fine. There's oh. got to be particles in the air, too, though. Yeah. I think they would have just been toast as soon as they opened that door. Yeah. Well, and, like, there was, like, you look around when you they open the door, and there's, like, the it's all loading through the metal of the cans and stuff like that. Like, that can't be. You and can't then there, be. Then there's Touareg prisoners coming through, and they're like, Touareg prisoners, that's yeah. where they're using to work. And they're all, like, their skin's peeling off, and they look <laughs> it, sick It and turns stuff. out those Touareg prisoners were actual just, they were Toleg prisoners, yeah. <laughs> and they were not <laughs> yeah. paid on the movie set. Cheap Moroccan labor, <laughs> yeah. lawsuits. Oh yes, this is where they find out. Uh, so we flash back to Rudy. Rudy's got some information with Sandecker, and he's like, "Oh man, we gotta get on top uh, of this all now. The, this poison has leaked into the Nigel River. It's and not just in that underground river anymore. It's in the actual river, and the, it's heading towards the Atlantic Ocean. In a week, it would be where they are, and then yeah, the Atlantic right after that, and then it's months. It's at the Eastern Seaboard. Yeah, three months. States. It's in New York or whatever. Yeah, and then it's just all around the world. And yeah. It's global catastrophe. Yeah. And I, I was thinking, like, man, what if that's happening right now? We just don't know it. Like, Dude. think about fu- like Fukushima leached into the water there at one point, and it was brr, spreading from there. I wonder what that's looking like now. And nobody just... Nobody, nobody talks, nobody talks about, about it. it. No? Like, just, that's just... That's a terrifying... That's a terrifying, worrisome thing is, like, how much information do we not know about yeah. what's really happening to us? Well, have you heard... Have you read about... Um, I listened to... I can't even say I read it. I read about it. No. <laughs> I listened to a podcast, The Dollop, about the Hanford chemical waste site. In Hanford, Connecticut. I'm unfamiliar. They just built huge concrete uh, uh, things in the ground and dumped all the nuclear waste into them and just started dumping them. And then they were like, hey, these big concrete things should be fine for 100 years. And within, I think it was 10 years or something like that, they were already starting to leak through. And like they didn't, so they don't, they put a bunch of concrete dome over, but they didn't put any concrete under it. So oh, it can just leach into the ground. And they were like, yeah, like, uh, um, I don't know how, like, it's the dollop. So it's like a history comedy podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so I don't know how, like, factual it was. But, like, the fact that it's, like, going into, uh, like, the Mississippi River or whatever big river down in the States is. And it's like, yeah, just chemical contaminants that they're just like, oh, frick. <laughs> <laughs> we are terrible. Yeah. Humans are awful. Yeah. Just destroying this planet. Yeah, just so what? I can microwave a pizza pop? Like, what's... I don't even know, like... It's, it is convenient, but they're so much better in the oven. Everything's yeah. better in the See, oven. See, I think so, too. And this is this is the hard-hitting facts right now. Um, fuck this movie. Uh, <laughs> pizza pops are better in the oven, and I eat them with a knife and fork. And I don't care. Nobody's going to tell me different. I'm okay? Not, I'm not judging you. And 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 I like it, and and just leave me alone about it, okay? <laughs> I eat my pizza pops the way I want. Yeah, Fuck you can't. You. T- it's fucking 2021. You can't kink shame me. Tell me what to do. I'll eat my pizza pops however I want. Oh. So, so they get so they get caught here, and then uh, we have a quick scene of Massard talking to somebody in an American accent. I guess his investors somewhere else, because he's trying to explain to them like, oh yeah, we got the people. I don't even know what he's talking about on the phone. I can't remember. Oh, he's isn't he talking to Kazim? I don't know because like. Does he put on an American accent when he talks to Kazim? I haven't noticed because he has a he has like a thick accent. Uh, I don't know know what his accent was, but it sounded like he was talking in a weird Belgian something. So yeah, it's kind of French, right? French, yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't know. But he was talking differently on the phone. I think it's irrelevant. Okay. So then she <laughs> Sweet, cha- good good point. Yeah, he chats with <laughs> Ava and she's like, You're you know, you're gonna kill everybody, blah, 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 blah. And then we cut to Al and Dirk in the back of the truck. This was a great scene. They all get captured, they all get knocked out, I think. Yes. And after that, they sep why did they separate the doctor from the two guys? Are they going to go kill Doak and Al? Is I think that the, so. Is that, that the kind of the general feeling yeah. was like because they wake up in the back of the truck, they're like, Where are we going? And uh yeah. he's like, Oh just in the middle of the desert. Middle of the desert yeah. with two dudes. They yeah. seem like just, you know, just grunts. And they're like, Yeah, just go take them out. Yeah. Bury them in the sand somewhere. That's what it felt like. Okay, yeah. That's that's was my that's the vibe I got too. Was was probably assassination. <laughs> We're just uh, taking them to the train station. Yeah, yeah exactly. Taking them to the train station, boys. So they 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 handcuffed into this truck and, and they es- escape with the gold coin. They managed to just find the one the screw. Stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. So one, they <laughs> have a fun, coin, <laughs> and they find one the one truck in history that I assume is held on by two screws. Mm-hmm. Um, the, so the bed of this truck, it's not even the bed of the truck. It's just like a sheath, like a truck liner. Yeah. A truck. Yeah. With, with the railings on it. And he's with one, cause he's handcuffed to it and they're laying down in the back of the truck, head towards the, 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 the tailgate and they were chained together in here. So that means somehow he got the coin. He undid it, which, how did that coin fit in so that? It was, per- it was perfect. Disbelief suspended. Yeah. They're handcuffed together yeah. in the middle. So they both, both hands at the same time over. Yeah. Unscrewing it, and then Zahn's watching, going like, eh, "Down." Yeah. Okay, back up. Yeah, yeah. Gets it unscrewed. Does the other one, but we don't even see him spinning that one. All yeah. of a sudden, it's just good. Yeah. They somehow get the tailgate open. I didn't see that happen because yeah. all of a sudden there's no tailgate behind them. Yeah. And then they proceed to bah! boot the cab of the <laughs> truck with two heavily armed guards inside. Just I guess living la vida loca in the front, just like listening to music too loud that they can't hear. Thumping. Come on, Eileen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, kick it, the box of the truck to off to push it off and then fall out and like, like, dude, I don't know, man. I you know they Steve's on. It wasn't as cut as Matthew McConaughey in this movie, but that's got to be three hundred pounds in the back of that, at least in the back of that truck, at least. It's yeah, it's heavy. And it and plus the metal of the truck, plus themselves. Yeah, well, that's what I meant. Yeah, oh, yeah. and then they kick it off. And I don't know if you've ever driven a truck, but you can feel those kind of things when you're driving a truck. Well, you'd hear them. You'd hear them. You'd feel the vibration of the yeah. kicks on the on the cab. And then all of a sudden, you're going five kilometers faster because you <laughs> you you know. Like, oh, we must have got a tailwind. Ex- Ooh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, and I was like, at first, I was like, well, they're driving through the desert. You know what I mean? Like I just imagined the Ace Venture, or like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but when you look that way. <laughs> is pretty flat like it's like it's it's you know it's not, it's not a lot of bumps all the desert around them is pretty flat and i bring this up for a reason it's all pretty flat and it's all like it looks pretty compact so they fall off this truck and they're still handcuffed to this thing which i was like fucking good plan now you're in the middle of the desert and you kind of see that in uh al's face because doke's like oh it walked out like i didn't think that woke and then steve's just like yeah great yeah, now what <laughs> yeah and so then the next scene they're in fucking huge sand dunes just dragging this thing behind them they go from flat compact sand to the middle like the perfect sand like every sand dune you've ever seen in every movie and how do they decide what direction they're gonna go they don't know where they are they're just yeah. like Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Let's go that way. Yeah. Looks good. <laughs> yeah. And apparently... The first thing he said was uh, uh, when they wake up in the truck, he was like, where are we? Yeah. Yeah. No idea where no they idea. are. Like, hey, let's go this way. This way. Because they figure out where they got to go. This is where they find the $2 million plane crash that they never put in the movie. They find this plane wreckage, and they're like, oh, I bet you there's a tool kit in there. Wait, and so when... So they filmed that plane going? Like, they filmed a thing with that, <laughs> how that plane got there? They $2 million on a plane crash scene that they never used. That's insane. Because yeah. I was thinking when they were like, when they, they like, uh, fucking sled down this hill in that truck, and then they fall out of it, and it's like, uh, and they look up, and there's just a fucking plane right there, and I was like, what? That that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's because it was shot, it was filmed, and then they had to cut it because there was uh, it's a two hour some, long yeah, movie. Yeah, it was so, <laughs> something to do with like uh, product placement of of sponsors and shit for the movie. I don't know. Mm-hmm. There was there's details to it though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they get loose and then they uh, surf the plane. They plane sail it. And I'm like, how windy is it? Yeah. There's no sand kicking yeah, up. It doesn't absolutely. look like it's windy enough to yep. sail a plane. Yeah. They've managed to find a phone and call the call Sandecker and be like, hey, we need some help. 
Well, you can't get any help. You're yeah. on your Three own. Three days or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you're on, your, you're on your own, but I can't ask you to do it alone. It's like, it's a good thing you don't have to. Yeah. Then they go in to infiltrate the toxic waste dump. And they break in in disguise with Buddy's car. Yeah, because they go to the Tulig, because they've got all the Tulig prisoners in there. And they're like, I guess, like the uh, the people of the area. And this Kazin, the warlord, has like has kind of bullied them into and taken them a bunch of them. And, and they're walking in this plant as like prisoners. And um, so they go to the leader and they're like, help us, like, you know, take up arms. Like, let's go fight mm. this guy. And the guy was like, absolutely not, dude. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm not getting involved yeah. in this. Um, and so they borrow his car, which is actually Kazim's car. Yes. And well, so one of six ever made. Yeah. And they're rolling up. <clears throat> and and they'll go, is that an actual car like six? It was made? apparently a replica of something. It was in the trivia too, yeah, okay. but I, yeah, it was something I never heard of. Um, yeah, and I also I'm not a car person, so you could have said like it was you know 1905 Chevelle, and I would have like sure. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so this is hilarious because this is what I was talking about earlier. I kind of got them confused with the train thing. Is that they pull up in this car with um, like an army truck behind them. And so they pull up, and the two guards go, "Oh my, it's Kazim!" Kazim was driving, here. yeah. So they all like get ready to go, and then, uh, uh, and then it's Matthew McConaughey and the guy driving the car, and then Steve Zahn's in the back of the thing. Hi, how are you? Hey, how are uh, you? Yeah. Hi, how are you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but so they get past the two false guards, and then. That's about it. Did, they make it all the way inside. Oh, I remember how they did that now because it was empty inside when they get in there. That's right. Because they evacuated it because yeah. they're going to blow it up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they're like, okay, they figure out, okay, he's not going to blow it up because that would look obvious. So yeah. they're going to make something happen that looks like it malfunctioned yeah. and exploded. So they figure out that there's an explosive set somewhere. So he's like, I'll find the bomb. Yeah. You find the girl. He's like, all right. I'm like, yeah. oh, oh, wow, just like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, because uh, like, it other. sounded like they were going to discuss it, and Steve Zahn just com- completely was just like, I guess I'll find the literal m- nuclear <laughs> waste thing full of dynamite, and you go get the call. <gasps> Sounds which, good. Yeah, which I guess, you know, know, know your goal. You know, <laughs> you mm-hmm. Figure it out. I did um, like this. Uh, I don't know how he made it to the... Oh, yeah, the rooftop, because he was taken... Eves was taken Ava to the helicopter. That's yeah. why. Because when the when they helicopter. when they got captured, like I said, they got split. So they they went to go die, and he just took her because he was like, "You're I mine." Think he now. wanted to seduce her, oh, or something like that. Probably something worse. Um, yeah, and so they he takes her up to the helicopter, and Matthew McConaughey gets up there, and they're on like the freaking top of the Burj Khalifa situation where it's literally, <laughs> and I, when I saw it, I was like, that's not an, a, like an actual helipad because it was literally so small that like, it would be so hard to land a helicopter on that thing, man. And like, I can't, I, I mean, it's, it would be hard to fly a helicopter. Right. And so I assume bodies. you get better at it, <laughs> but like the amount, the size of that helipad was stupid. It was literally like a set of stairs and the H symbol. And that was it. <laughs> They, but this, I did like this fight though. But I, where did the mysterious stranger come from? Because I don't think he was in the helicopter. But like McConaughey takes his time getting up there, and he's like, "Ah, eh, get out!" And then yeah. all of a sudden, he lets Eve get the gun to hit her head. I'm like, yeah. "Why? Why would you let this happen?" Yeah. And all of a sudden, butcha! Yeah, creepy hooded figure comes. Yeah, yeah, creepy hooded figure guy and comes again. And he's tough. He's really tough. Yeah. But they end up, uh, they they fight. McConaughey gets into that precarious position where he's yeah. like, "Oh no!" And he, uh, he does the old drop and catch. Yeah. Which. Man, I don't know if you've ever done a pull-up, but if you fall from like six feet and try to catch yourself, you're gonna pop your shoulders out. Yeah, you're gonna rip something. Yeah, but he's just like ah. Yeah, spooky. and then fine. And then but you can't see, up. and you can't see him because all the uh, all the, the mirrors have been concentrated on, which I would think would burn you. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. That's like, exactly what I was. We've, gonna we've say. all played with a magnifying glass when we yep. were kids. Yep, concentrating that heat. So just all mirrored solar panels. I feel like the helicopter would get blown up. If you they can would incinerate get... chemicals with this amount of power, then I assume you can ant hill a couple guys in a helicopter on the top of this building. I, I agree. Yeah. 100%. They wouldn't have been alive. No. But anyway, he beats this guy up, kicks him off the edge. Yeah. With a Zon, little help from what's her name? I think. Ava. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right, because she escapes. She gets out. Yeah, she gets out of the helicopter somehow. No. Yeah. I can't remember how. And then Eves takes off. He's like, well, you know what? We'll leave you there. You can die too, bitch. Yeah, yeah. And she, yeah, she saves him for the first time in the movie. Uh, and dude gets knocked off because, uh, of course, we get the payoff that we wanted. Dude Double gets kicked off the kick. top of the, yeah. And he um, he falls onto a solar panel, which yeah, was cool. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. 
And then uh, Zahn finds the explosive, sta- cuts into a barrel because he finds it, figures out that it's in a barrel, gets the explosive out. Meanwhile, Eves is setting the temperature to 5,000 degrees Celsius. Yeah. That's hot. Yeah, I would assume. And Zahn gets the explosives, runs out, jumps as this thing no. is heating up. Long. <clears throat> catches yeah. something and hangs there while the flames are, he would be incinerated Dude, have you have you, even just the explosion, have you, have you seen the Holt Locker? Yes. Um, and they explain to you how in the like the folks in the Holt Locker how like you don't have to be that close to a bomb for the percussion to like fuck you up. Mm-hmm. And so like in the folks in the Holt Locker, he's running away and then it explodes and it, the blood hits the front of his mask because it literally like the shock wave can kill you mm-hmm. of these things, right? A lot of the time that is what kills you. And so I assume this huge inferno flaming concentrated <laughs> beam of fire that's five feet from Steve Zahn's Hanging on to a thing <laughs> in the air. 5,000 degrees. You've, we've all been near a fire. Yeah. Five feet away from a fire. Yeah. There's some wood. You're like, this is kind of hot. I gotta, yeah. I got to move back. Yeah. 5,000 degrees. He'd Insinuating just, your flesh. He'd be gone. And yeah. then that would ignite those those explosives. Yeah. And it would still blow up. Yeah. Completely unbelievable. Yeah. Suspend it. it and this oh, movie yeah. gets more insane in the last five yeah, minutes. It keeps going. I'm like, wow, there's still half an hour left. Yeah. I'm like, crisis averted. All of a sudden, bum, 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 bum. here comes Kazim and his chopper. You're like, ah, oh, yeah. crap. So they manage to get a Jeep and drive away again. And there's a huge car chase here, a car helicopter chase. Yeah. And this is where Ava starts, I hope you don't throw like a girl. Yeah. Starts throwing the bombs out and Zahn's shooting Which, them. Which, when she does it, she fucking, she's, she's fucking huffing these she's things. Throwing better than me. And he was like, and he was like, do it when I say. And then he said, go. And then she just started whipping him. And he didn't say anything. He didn't <laughs> say go anymore. Because you you hear him say something later. <laughs> like, uh, like I'm walking on it. Like when, because uh, Steve's like, drive faster or whatever. Uh, find and us I'm, some cover. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm working, working on it. Yeah. And then, but she's just still <laughs> there fucking hucking these dynamites over. Yeah, they shoot all of them. Like, why don't you save a couple? Yeah. And also, isn't this an artifact? Like an ironclad artifact? You're just whipping dynamite at it? Well, they didn't know it was there because all of a sudden they stop. Wasn't that the point? I thought he knew. That's I thought that's why he was asking her to do it. I No, I thought it was just to create smoke to stop Kazim from seeing them. That was my uh, that was my. No, impression. I think he knew. How? How? History. How? The paintings. <laughs> it all comes together, man. Yeah, because somebody had painted a solar panel plant <laughs> in there. That's right. Actually, between the solar panel plant yeah. and this five-walled fucking yeah, How building. did he know it was exactly like the fuck? See, that's the whole thing. I didn't think he did. I thought no. they just randomly went, holy no, crap, no we way. just uncovered the iron That makes crap. me more angry Ooh, than it should. him. It should. Than him already knowing impossibly. I get that, because I'm just like, sure. But if he didn't know, that makes me upset in my heart. Like, oh. that. you doesn't just have, you don't find planes <laughs> and old ironclads in the middle of Molly for just... It, 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 uh, it made me angry. Yeah. I was not happy about that, because I was like, oh, wow, they just find it randomly in the yeah. desert. Then they break into it. They find the dead bodies in there, and they're like, okay, we got to figure something out. Which is pretty up. funny, because they were like this ironclad thing, and then they just break some wood and jump in. Like, I was like, this thing's not really heavily apparently defended. Apparently, ironclad had wooden panel doors. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, look, I need a little help. Smash, yeah. smash, smash. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. So they, they uh, have a little cannon battle, so they try an old cannon. They shoot Kazim down, which just, that was pretty cool. Go Fuck yourself, Sahara movie. You <laughs> well, I think, thought you loved this. You th- yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> Deeply. You know why? Because I got to see a cannon shoot down a helicopter. And it like, was super dope. I loved the slow, the slow, like, like, it shoots through the window and he's like, oh, whew, yeah, we're good. And then, yeah. S- okay, so way before that, <laughs> um, way before that, uh, 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 they're all in the ironclad, and he goes, "We've got two foot thick steel walls. You'll never be able to get to us." And then immediately, the helicopter tears the hundreds of holes into the thing. Um, and so, and a- as he's doing this in the helicopter, he's taking passes at them, shooting, trying to kill them. I was like, one, just like get it, land the helicopter. But I guess why he didn't is because he's amassing an. They're all conv- his whole army for some reason is converging on this ironclad. You never really know what they're planning to do in nope. general with that army. Maybe, Maybe they were this. going to take over Massard Enterprises. Maybe because it was right next door. Apparently, yeah, yeah. that yeah. There's no explanation there. But anyway, they blow him up. Kazim is toast. 
Yeah. And this, I was laughing because all of a sudden, because he's like, oh, we kill the head, or chop off the head, yeah. the snake will die, or the yeah. body will die. And then as soon as the helicopter blows up, everyone's like, oh, guns down. I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, are you telling me that not one of these soldiers was ready for Kazim to die and be yeah. like, I am the new warlord? Yeah, exactly. Why this, is, this is bullshit. And no and second like, in command? Oh, the tour eggs. Ah, you guys, you got me. Classic. You got me, Cussler. Yeah. I was seriously like laughing. I'm like, how did that happen? And oh, <laughs> shit. Wow. Yeah. Idiot. Yeah. <laughs> They all surrender, and then, um, yeah, they get the gold. They get the gold, he gets the car, they get the power, and then he gets the woman. First you get the sugar, then you get the power, then you get the women. Why did that guy let him keep a car? I'm not sure. I don't even know if he did. I just wrote, got the car. So they, <laughs> he did, because, okay, okay. So they find all the gold, because it was a wheel, mm, and then... Um, uh, now that this thing is b- b- like t- t- torn to shreds from all the gunfire that's been going into it, I guess they're going. Numa's gonna like look into it, um, and do research stuff. But uh, um, but yeah, at the end scene, he's with uh, Ava on the beach, at the Bay of Monterey, or whatever the fuck. <laughs> you, me, the yeah. Bay of Monterey. Yeah. Um, which I don't know where that is. Uh, and also, so he's got that. He's got the guys like that. Uh, the 1905 Chevelle or whatever the fuck it is. He's got that car. They're on the beach. Um, he says another thing that's not really. A, 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 it's it's very 2005 because the whole go like a gold thing. But I guess she likes it. And then it's happily ever after for them. And you find out that they kept all that gold in that uh, little pass through yeah. cave there. Yeah, in a, in a connection between Lower and Upper <laughs> Village. <laughs> and then that's it. Yeah, that's the end. Yeah. That was uh, Sahara, everybody. Sahara. You got a real Sahara. You got a real rating for this one? Because I gave it six and a half surf planes out of ten solar power toxic waste incinerators. Nice. Because it it was it was exciting. There was a few times I checked the time because yeah. I was like, man, I gotta watch two movies in one yeah, day. Yeah. Ugh, this is taking a while. Yeah. But it, it clipped along pretty good. There were a few lulls here and there. I liked the actors, I liked the characters, there were but there was a lot of things that weren't explained, and I was like, this come on, like Give us a give us a little credit. Yeah, I want to know wh- how they got here, how this happened, why this happened. Yeah, but it was an action movie based on a book. You can't really expect too much. Yeah. But it wasn't bad. Yeah, no, I, I liked it. I rated it uh, uh, five fist fights out of one gun fight that was needed. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I did like it, and and I'm glad. It, I mean, it, well, I don't think it was. It is a garbage movie, like it yeah. is. Well, it's it's just your like I said earlier, it's just that triumphant like yeah, the Americans are gonna win. Yeah, yeah we never lose like that. It was, yeah. To me, it was like that. It was almost like a recruitment film for Numa. Yeah, yeah. Well, literally, because uh, uh, I because I wrote it down. And I'm now just remembering this note too. Because when I read it, I was like, what? I just all caps. I wrote American Man because that's what the mo- the song that was playing. We're in American Bam. Yeah. Yeah. The soundtrack was just yeah. totally geared towards the old timers. Yeah. Like just guys that would be like, yeah, I remember my time in the navy. Let's then watch again, Sahara. It, but it matched perfectly to fucking like him sofing on that fucking thing with uh, uh, whatever was playing. You know what Give I mean? Give me a little fucking... to the left. Yeah. <laughs> oh, ridiculous. Yeah, and I, I, you know, Steve Zahn got shafted. We talked about this. Uh, just, <laughs> just grabbing up is that I haven't seen him in pretty much anything else, which is a god. I gotta look, gotta look through his IMDb and find yeah. some more Steve Zahn movies. Yeah, because he's great. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> also. Consistently in the movie, he got shafted. He had to go find the bomb instead of the woman. And then, yeah, what the insult, the the insult to injury for me is when they're on the plane. Doke is like standing up, like doing this part, and Arms Steve, yeah, and Steve's just on the ground, like, ah! <laughs> like <laughs> walking, oh, walking the back tail fin, which does something, I guess. Yeah, I guess how you steer. Yeah. It's your rudder, isn't it? I don't know, my. On I the ground with air, I, maybe, but I don't think they how much wind. All right, anyway, that's yeah. Wind <laughs> wind. <laughs> <laughs> Movie's over. Just all dog shit. As always, everybody, follow us on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. Throw up a like or a dislike. YouTube likes that. The algorithm really respects that kind of stuff. Jaden, thank you so much for doing this. It was a pleasure. Let's, yeah. do, another, let's do another one right away. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, I guess right. going now. <laughs> Woo. All right, bye everybody. Ah. Uh, Thank you so much, you guys, for listening and for watching. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Turn on notifications for new episodes every Sunday at 12.15 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Take care. Free Ugar.